Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of DC Comics Screwing Up that I like to call The Trap Car. You triggered my trap card! It's been a couple of weeks now since DC Comics hired homophobic underwear stain on humanity Orson Scott Card to pen a story for their Superman anthology, The Adventures of Superman, number one, and their master plan of generating lots of discussion, controversy, and publicity has worked in just about all the wrong ways. See, there's this idea that any publicity, be it negative or positive, is good. I don't know why that is, but I think it has something to do with the idea that so long as people are talking about you, then that's good. And people are talking about you, DC Comics, and how they refuse support your hiring of the homophobic bigot Orson Scott Card. Now, he's not the only pop culture celebrity to have narrow-minded, ugly views. For example, Adam Baldwin of Firefly is a right-wing, dyed-in-the-wool Republican, as is David Gerald, the writer of the most famous original Star Trek series episode ever, Trouble with Tribbles. Heck, to bring it closer to superhero comics, let's go to superhero comics, with Chuck Dixon, the first writer on the Birds of Prey comic book series before Gail Simone, who inadvertently gave rise to the Black Canary Oracle ship, and is a giant homophobic bigot, as is the worst comic book artist ever to exist, Rob Liefeld, best known for creating Shatterstar and Deadpool. On a side note, Shatterstar is now gay, and that's something that Rob Liefeld said he intends to straighten out should he ever get the chance to work back at Marvel Comics. Just a free tip, Marvel. Don't hire him back. Now, while those were all examples of pop culture celebrities who hold rather crummy views on their fellow members of the human race, none of them, to the best of my knowledge, actually hold a position in NOM, the National Organization of Marriage, an active hate group dedicated to ensuring that LGBTQ people are not on equal footing with straight people with regards to marriage. DC Comics hired Orson Scott Card because of his work as a writer, in particular because of his work on the Ender's Game Trilogy, which is some sci-fi novel series I never heard of until now. And after hearing how much of an ignorant, selfish mouth breather who steals our auction on a daily basis that he is, I have no intention of reading that series. Ever. Now, seeing as how Orson Scott Card devotes time, money, and effort to a hate group that targets minorities, most decent people would feel some reluctance, if not outright revulsion, at buying anything with his name on it and supporting his endeavors. But DC Comics did not think of this, because DC Comics is not in the business of selling comics, but in shooting their own foot. I like to call this the one step forward, one step back approach. And I have some examples to better illustrate this business plan that DC Comics seems so wholly invested in. Revamp Batwoman as a gay crime fighter in Gotham City with an awesome costume design. One step forward. Do absolutely nothing with her for two years straight. One step back. Bring back Stephanie Brown from the dead after she was brutally murdered to give Batman man pains after many years of campaigning by her fans. One step forward. Have her replace Cassandra Cain, who was far more popular than several DC Comics other series at the time, such as Aquaman and the Green Arrow, to become the new Batgirl. One step back. Introduce a new gay character as a member of the Green Lantern Corps. One step forward. Have it be Alan Scott, who is retconned to be young and single, and have the love of his life fridged in his very first appearance to give Alan motivational pain to become the Green Lantern. One step back. Hire Gail Simone. 
One step forward. Fire Gail Simone. One step back. Rehire Gail Simone due to overwhelming public pressure. One step forward. Hire Orson Scott Card. One step back. Scrap the entire DC Universe and start afresh, giving fans new and old a chance to come back and be on the same wavelength without needing to know 30 plus years of history. One step forward. Hire Rob Liefeld to do artwork five kilometers back. So, as you can see, DC Comics has made as many strides to an alienate and infuriate fans as they have to build goodwill with them. But in hiring the bottom of a barrel slime writer Orson Scott Cart, they may have actually gone too far this time. Because, see, if you like me or you know just a decent person who's trying to be a good person then we've made our intent loud and clear that so long as Orson Scott Card has writing duties on the adventures of Superman number one we're not buying it with Orson Scott Card being on the same level as Republicans as People we wouldn't mind throwing into the path of a raging grizzly bear who had just been rudely woken up from their midwinter nap, we just don't see his values as being on the same level as Superman's. After all, Superman stands for truth and justice. He's kind and compassionate, with a heart big enough for the whole world, the ultimate good guy. Now, while I have heard that Grant Morrison's writing has declined in the New 52, he did capture the absolute essence of Superman in his book, The Old Star Superman. I haven't read it, but I did see scans of this one page, and according to a summary that I read online in this story, Superman has absorbed a huge amount of solar energy, and because of that, he's starting to die. So he's working really hard to put as much stuff right with the world before he finally leaves. And in the midst of all this, his super hearing catches the words of a young woman on the side of a skyscraper, fighting her inner demons and losing. And despite his own time running short, he takes times out to find her and we get this page. That is Superman. Despite being an alien with superpowers far beyond any mortal human being, in the end, he's a good person. He doesn't lord his superpowers over people, and I cannot for the life of me see him actively hating on anyone regardless of their age, skin color, religion, or sexual orientation. Unlike the sweat from a hairy NFL linebacker's armpit shaped into a human form called Orson Scott Card, who believes gay people should not marry, that people become gay because of sexual molestation and rape, and that if gay marriage is legalized, the government should be overthrown, violently if necessary. And I'm not the only one who thinks this way. In Dallas, Texas, there is a comic book store called Zeus's Comics, owned and operated by Richard Neal, who has publicly declared his intent not to sell any printed issues of The Adventures of Superman No. 1. Why? Partly because Richard Neal himself is gay, but also because he refuses to support anyone who seeks to bring harmful legislation against a minority group. After his public declaration, a number of comic book stores throughout the U.S. also declared their intent not to sell any issues of Adventures of Superman number 1. Now, this has gotten some attention, not just in the comic book world, but also beyond, with USA Today reprinting the story of Richard Neal's decision not to carry that issue of Superman. Heck, 
It has garnered so much attention that Summit Entertainment executives in charge of making the Ender's Game trilogy movie series are starting to get nervous about having Orson Scott Card's name associated with it. <laughs> and if that, as if that wasn't enough, their artist who was unfortunately paired with that noxious human gaseous form called Orson Scott Card, Chris Sprouse, has just walked away from the anthology entirely. The statement that he put out, and I quote, has him saying, It took a lot of thought to come to this conclusion, but I've decided to step back as the artist on this story. The media surrounding this story reached a point where it took away from the actual work, and that's something I wasn't comfortable with. My relationship with DC Comics remains as strong as ever, and I look forward to my next project with them. Now, while this isn't as strong as saying, I refuse to sully my artistic skill by working with that homophobic bigot, it is still a rather strong stand to take. In fact, according to that USA Today article I mentioned earlier, although Chris Sprouse had another story with a different writer he had the draw, He's withdrawn from the project entirely. This has also postponed The Adventures of Superman number one, which had been intended for release on May 29th, and has, in my mind at least, made Orson Scott Card a rather toxic barrel of radioactive waste in the eyes of his co-workers at DC Comics. So, DC Comics, you wanted controversy, you wanted attention, and you wanted people to talk about you. And now you've got it. And what did it cost? Well, it's cost you the artist who was supposed to be working on the story. It's cost you a lot of goodwill from comic book shops and fans who aren't ignorant bigots. It's made a movie company nervous about making a multi-million dollar production that is already, from what I know, in production, and it has indefinitely delayed the book. So what does this all mean? It means that there's now a turning point with what we'll put up with in our entertainment and what we won't, and that the excuse that it's just a comic book, or just a movie, or just a TV show, no longer holds water with us. If we don't like what you're doing, we can cost you the one thing that you hate to lose, and the one thing that you actually give a damn about. Money. At least when it comes to homophobia. Racism, we're still working on that. I'm Triple J, and that's all I've got left to say. Take care.